today's video, we're going to be making chicken noodle soup entirely from scratch. This is going to be a very simple recipe, just a few ingredients, nothing fancy. This recipe comes from my great grandmother, uh, but it's a style of making soup that would probably be done in so many homes all over because uh, it's really just something simple using the ingredients that are on hand. So not going to be adding any, you know, coconut and lime or anything like that. It's really just carrots, onion, some salt, chicken, and then some fresh noodles made from scratch. So to start with, let's just get our chicken in the pot here. a second to rinse my hands and the cutting board and then get my uh, towel strapped on here so I have that handy. All right, I'm gonna pull over some scraps. And what we're gonna do is really just roughly chop these veg and put them in the pot. it's always on camera when it wants to be difficult but that's okay we'll just get that off of there get rid of that papery outer layer and just do a rough chop on our onions here Do a quick chop here. Doesn't need to be particularly precise or anything. We're just looking for some chunks of onion and then we'll do the same with carrot. And this is going to be the broth for our soup. There's no fancy stock or anything involved. Just gonna make it with the whole chicken and some onion, carrot, and some salt. Yeah, I know stock is a pretty common thing for folks to make, and I guess my experience of it is it seems like something more complicated, and I know generally the intent is you just use what you have. But uh this is kind of how I think of making stock, just with the simple stuff. You know, we're not roasting bones or anything like that. You're just going to get the flavor from cooking the chicken in the liquid with the veg. I'm going to go ahead and peel these carrots. I recently acquired Giorgio Locatelli's cookbook, made in Italy, which I've been reading. It's very interesting. Look at Italian cuisine. And uh, he comments on this same thing. You know, he's a Michelin star chef, but when he talks about his family cooking growing up, that, you know, no one made stock like, like cooking bones or anything like that. You did it more like this. So 
That was validating a way, but of course, the experience of many, many people. And you get more formalized attempts at making stock, but that's a lot of chatter, but really what you get here is just a very delicious chicken broth. And that's going to be the basis of our soup. And then we'll have the noodles to go with it. So. Just getting the carrots peeled, and we'll do a rough chop on those. So we can make our soup. I had the great fortune of knowing my great-grandmother, whose recipe I'm making. She was an amazing cook. She immigrated from Croatia as a child, so a very direct connection. The old world way of making things. Well, of course, my mother makes this recipe too. She's the one who taught me how to do it. Makes such an incredible, comforting soup. Tastes like home. Great thing to make on a fall day or a winter day. And best of all, it's so simple you can just whip it up on any weeknight. I'm kidding, of course. There's definitely some more involved work here to make this soup from scratch like this. Um, but it is a very rewarding effort comforting meals for a few days out of it, which is so nice. I actually had not made this for a while, but I've been thinking about it. And it seemed like a good choice to share with you all. So I'm just going to roughly chop these carrots myself a flat edge here so I can safely cut it lengthwise without it rolling on me. Let me just, uh, I'm gonna split up those like bigger sections, but the thinner parts we can just cut into chunks. Nothing too particularly precise here. They'll get nice and soft cooking in the broth for a while. And just some some chunks, no need to go particularly small or finely diced or anything like that. As I get these chopped up, I'm just tossing them into the pot with my whole chicken. Have that nice fresh chicken. Use the best quality you can get. Uh, that you're able to obtain. Because that's all of the flavor of having the meat from the chicken in the soup. So if you can get yourself a good chicken, it's gonna make this really wonderful. And then just gonna add a bit of salt to season up the stock. We can add more later if we need, but give it a start. Help season the meat and make that beautiful broth. And that is really all that we need. And we're just gonna put this on the stove. I'm gonna fill it with water to cover and let that simmer away until the chicken is fully cooked. And let's get started on our noodles. Got about a cup and a half of flour here. I'm gonna make a well in the top. Kind of a volcano crater that we can drop our eggs in get started on the pasta. Just gonna go ahead and crack those eggs right into the center here. A 
let's go ahead and add a little salt, maybe a teaspoon or so. So we have some seasoning in the noodles. And then we're going to beat those eggs a little bit just to break them up, get started on the mixing process here. And then we'll just start incorporating the flour. Start forming our dough. And there we have disaster. The lava has broken out of that volcano and spread destruction everywhere. Yeah, that was uh, inelegant. I really wanted to reshoot this. So just be like a nice, elegant video, you know, make sure it looked professional and sharp. And then I decided it was better just to keep going because this is what happens. I'm not a professional chef. Uh, I don't make noodles from scratch that often. There was a period where I was doing it more, but it's been a while. I'd like to get back to that. But stuff like this happens. It's not actually a big deal. It just wasn't as clean, contained. You know, I'm going to have to bring things together here to recover from that. But... It's the reality that stuff isn't perfect and I don't always do everything exactly the way I hope or, you know, if you practice and it's fine and then you mess up in front of the camera. So I'm just going to go with what we had. And we're just going to start kneading and working it. We got all that egg and flour incorporated. And we just want to get kind of a soft dough formed here. We're going to work it. We're just going to have to knead it for a few minutes to get all that good dough action happening. And in the process of doing this, it did seem a touch dry. Um, maybe because of our egg incident. Maybe lost some of that egg volume onto my surface, so... I did add just a touch more egg to kind of loosen things up and get more of the consistency we wanted. Like I said, I'm not a professional. And, uh, not an expert in the production of dough, so hope to practice more and gain some more expertise, but just doing our best here. I know the result is going to be good. Um, so just trying to work that dough, get some kneading action going. And get it kind of nice and, nice and stretchy. Just working it. Some good exercise. No uh, mixer here. Let's do it the old fashioned way. And we've got ourselves a nice little ball of dough. So, in the end, I'm pretty happy with that. And we're just going to set this aside to rest for about half an hour. All the chicken is burbling away on the stove, just simmering and getting nice and cooked. And there we see it, just boiling. There was some foam that formed, and I did skim some of that off, off camera, just to clean that up a little bit, but it's just gonna cook there in its cauldron while we get our noodles ready. There are so many amazing aromas in the kitchen. It's so nice to just have that cooking away on the stove. But our dough has rested. So I'm going to pop it out. 
and I'm just going to split this into two pieces to make it a little easier to work with. Gonna start hitting this with the rolling pin. Start working to get it rolled out. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna roll this till it makes nice thin noodles. Again, I'm not a professional. Still developing my skills. I'm giving it our best shot here. some flour here ready to go and put a little on the rolling pin to help with that sticking and we're just gonna use some elbow grease to get this rolled out definitely there is no such thing as a pasta roller in my family no machine to do it just got out the rolling pin and went to work it's kind of nice to be hands-on with that too. I just kind of keep the process going, kind of use just a little bit of flour if we need. And get this dough rolled out. do the noodle size to your preference, but I like to get nice small noodles. Definitely takes a little time and effort. But it's definitely worth it. Basically building some sort of amorphous island shape. I'm generally aiming for something rectangular. So we're gonna cut the noodle segments out of this dough. And obviously the more uniform the rectangle, the more uniform the noodles would be, but we're not a professional pasta production company, so no specific need for uniformity. It's kind of nice to get there if we can. Alright, getting that rolled out. basically getting there for this half of the dough. Let's check 
and the thickness there. Okay, and so now that I've got the dough rolled out thinly, I'm going to just roll it up to a cylinder like this. And then I'm going to cut my noodles by just slicing through that cylinder. Let's go for some nice small noodles here. Just slicing through there. We'll unravel these little spirals to get our pasta. I'd rather be doing this on a cutting board, so let's make that shift. Right. So yeah, just trying to slice finely to make nice little noodles. Unwind them, and this is what we get. Wonderful little thing. And that is what we are aiming for. I'm just going to set those on the edge of a bowl here. I'm going to dry out a little bit before we go into the soup. I'm just going to keep them separated so they don't stick. Definitely some effort involved here, but it's worth it. I'll go ahead and just keep slicing here to get through this. Alright, and just slicing up the last bit here. Okay. And let's get these unwound. making all of our delicious noodles. This is where a helper can really be handy.
And we're making lots of noodles. A nice big pot of chicken noodle soup. Can feed a family. One or two people have meals for a couple days. Such a great thing to have around. All right, so that was the first half of our dough. We've got another half to finish out here. It's going to be the exact same process. We're just going to take our ball of dough and get it rolled out. And then we'll turn it into another batch of noodles. I've basically made a pasta taco here. Let's get that rolled out. Working the dough. And I should have left this under a damp towel. I've got some dried edges there, so I was just trimming those off keep things nice. We're getting things rolled out. We'll get this nice and thin. So the noodles aren't too chunky. That can be fine too if that's what you prefer. call that a rectangle but we're doing the best we can here so again let's roll it up into a cylinder and we're gonna go through the same process I cut this in half to make it a little easier to work with here on the board and go ahead and slice up our noodles Just trying to cut small little thin strips.
think this is my favorite part of the process. Just trying to cut these nice thin noodles. And again, we'll unravel all of our little spirals. Creating our second batch of these noodles here. You could definitely make the broth and use store-bought noodles. You could use store-bought broth and make the noodles. Of course, I love the from scratch version, but we don't always have the time to do that. Certainly the different components are all nice in and of themselves if you want to mix and match. I say that partly as a reminder to myself because I've never really done this mix and match style, but it's so nice having that chicken cooking away in the pot that I do feel like I'm likely to cook the meat and broth that way and maybe use some store-bought noodles instead of the full homemade noodle version, just because I don't always have that kind of time. But there's no doubt that this version is exceptional and offers that true comforting feeling. It is also satisfying and rewarding to make. Finishing up the slicing here. All right. And uh, needed to give a noodle to the dog because he's a good boy. Definitely thinks the chicken cooking on the stove is for him. But yeah, let's just get the last of these noodles unraveled. It'll be ready to go. We'll cook them right in that chicken broth. It'll get so delicious. Okay, so I have taken the chicken off the stove and we're going to separate the meat from the carcass so we can use the meat in our soup. And I had uh, flipped it over in order to get some more cook on the breast where it was above the surface of the liquid. And I kind of... Uh, created some structural instability, so I kind of pulled out this first piece here rather than being able to pull out the larger body of a chicken as the whole. But uh, I'm going to grab the pieces out of here. It's extremely hot. I would normally let this cool down to where you could pull it apart, but uh, 
needed to kind of keep things moving timing wise so I'm going to use my tongs and take the meat off while things are still extremely hot um, I'm going to take the skin off just because the boiled skin texture isn't really for everyone I kind of want to try to see if I can dry that and maybe then fry them up but uh we're not going to include it in the soup, just kind of for that texture reason. And then we're just going to pull the nice meat off. I want to make sure we get everything that we can. So many good bits from this chicken we'll want to capture to include in the soup. I'll just kind of take each piece and do our best to get little bits of meat off there. Let's go ahead and get the bulk out here so we can get the breast meat. I'm going to go ahead and get that skin off there. And this really all is much easier to do if it's cooled down. You can pretty quickly pull everything off with your hands and get things shredded up. But, uh, hey, we're making an ASMR video. And we're just going to get things done here while it's still warm. precision dish. We just want to get the meat in chunks. It'll be part of our soup. So we don't have any gigantic chunks in there. And I'm just transferring this all to a bowl and I'll re-add it back to our broth once we've gotten everything off of the carcass. separating out any random bits, just looking to get the nice, delicious meat. Everything that we can. Just make the most of it. Like I said, some of this is definitely easier if you just use your hands, but here we are. Nice 
meaty soup. Now that we got the breast taken care of there. So much good stuff here. I love the dark meat. I just want to get everything off the bone. Make sure we save all of the delicious meat. And we'll add that to our bowl as well. And we'll just have this last leg to worry about. little bits of wing that were still hiding there in our broth. Just want to get everything out of there. Clean up that wing. Get the good bits here. It's a process. there. Let's get this last drumstick. Drumstick was always my favorite part growing up. Alright, getting all the last bits off of there. I don't want to leave anything behind. All right, and we have gotten what we needed to get. Let's get that last bit out of there and do a little chop here on some of these pieces. Just so we're bite-sized. All right, and let's get those into our bowl. Get the stragglers here. scrape this cutting board to get all of those good little bits and juices into our bowl here. And that is set. 
so we can finish making our soup. So I've got my broth back here on the stove. We're going to bring that up to a boil. And let's add in all of this delicious chicken meat that we just extracted from our chicken carcass. So much goodness. It's going to be a nice thick soup. All the flavor from the bones infused into this. Let's get this mixed in and we're gonna get this up to a boil so we can cook our noodles. It is just a heavenly process being next to the stove Taking in the aroma. Do a quick taste here. Check our seasoning. And then I want to do just uh, some more salt here. It's really only our, our only seasoning agent. Of course, if you wanted to add herbs or something like that, a flavor that suits you, you certainly could. Just keeping things super simple. Just enjoying the simple flavors of this soup, enhanced with some salt. All the great flavor from the chicken, but certainly you could add whatever you wanted to this. But I'm just doing it in the classic way that our family has done it. And once that's up to a boil, we'll be able to get those noodles in and finish things up here. So let's do it. Let's get our wonderful handmade noodles into our broth here. A little stir and get all of these in there. All right. And this is just going to take a few minutes. It doesn't take very long. I just want to get those soft. few stragglers there into the pot and we're just gonna let those boil and cook there's really nothing more that we have to do just get our noodles finished up absorbing that wonderful stock It is a pretty thick soup, and as it cooks, those noodles do absorb some of the liquid. Give it another taste. And I am 
going to add some water just to give it a little more liquid volume so it's thickening up and just a touch more salt so we get a wonderful flavor that I'm looking for and of course we just have to taste it again not necessarily to verify that it tastes good but you just want to taste more of it but yeah this is in a great place our noodles are cooked and we are ready to serve so i'm gonna get a nice ladle of soup into my bowl here make sure we get some of that broth and that is our chicken soup made from scratch 